I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What's going on? Um, I realized I just watched the video uh, that I did. I don't know if it was yesterday, and I realized I had like dip all in my teeth. <laughs> I probably, I just took it. I just took one out now, so I probably still have some. Um, but yeah, my teeth aren't. I, I don't chew rocks, and my teeth aren't rotting out. I just I had dip in my teeth, <laughs> and I didn't. I didn't rinse well enough apparently uganda africa is awake yo 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 what up polly polly p so a couple things um i'm gonna talk about a couple different things it's super late it's 12 o'clock and i've been just kind of messing around tonight taking a break um private beta is is still going i'm hoping tomorrow we're going to be turning on uh, AML KYC for all of you private beta users that are watching, and you'll be able to finalize your accounts and uh, actually start um, simulated trading and things like that, which I'm actually really excited about. So um, hopefully that's tomorrow. Uh, um, man, there's like there's a bunch of stuff going on. I kind of I like were as soon as I woke up this morning. Uh, as soon as I woke up this morning, I, I just started grinding. I just started working. And, um, and I, I basically worked until like 7 o'clock. And um, I, I decided, so I tell you what, man. We, so we got this, we got this new dog. Uh, it's a Ber Bernice Mountain Dog. And he's nine weeks old. He is absolutely the cutest puppy I've ever seen in my life. Like... I have never been a dog person. I really haven't. I'm not even really a cat person. Um, this dog is converting me. Like this dog is turning me into a dog lover. Like we have a dog, Max. He just annoys me. Like <laughs> Max is the sweetest dog, but he's just annoying. Like he's he's whiny and super super passive, and he's just like I don't know. He's like a great family dog, but he's just I don't know. But Bernie, I tell you what, this dog's paws are like this big. He's like nine weeks old and he's just going to be so big. And he, he, he like took a nap on me in, in bed today and like, or tonight. Um, and he's just, God, he's just so beautiful. And he, he's like a, he's like a baby black bear. Like it's basically what he's like right now. He's like a baby black bear. Can we see the puppy? Um, I, so I don't know if I'll be able to show this or not. I took a couple little pictures today. I put one on my, I posted one on my Instagram. You might be able to see this. Or if I get the, that's basically what he looks like. Um, and um, so he's just so stinking adorable, man. Um, that That's what he, <laughs> that's that's my stepson holding him. That's how big he is. Uh, and Xander's not a, a, a very, well, he's getting taller, but he's just, he's just the stinking cutest puppy ever. And his temperament is, is absolutely adorable. He's, uh, he's just amazing. He really is so far. He's really impressive. Now he pees constantly. He's like still super nervous about the new environment. So, um, you know, he's peeing constantly, <clears throat> but, uh, anyway, so I'm going to talk about a couple things today. So the one thing that I'm, so it's funny because I, so I talked um, previously about um, how I wanted to start talking about some kind of casino gambling type projects, even though it's always been a thing that I didn't, I, I wouldn't do in the past. And um, and I got one. 
who who uh, who actually sent me 0.1 Bitcoin to talk about him today. And I'm not going to get too deep into it, but this is this is what I'm. So there are a couple things. So one, I'm going to go over this simple trading strategy that, as you know, people that are newcomers to the space can can really use. Um, and to kind of keep themselves safer and be able to trade more effectively without having to really um, to, to sweat. You know what I mean? Um, and then, um, you know, I, I, there's such a war going on, I feel, and it's getting bigger between Bitcoin maximalists and altcoin. I'm going to call them altcoin players because I kind in, in some instance, like people that swing trade altcoins, to me, it is kind of like playing a game in itself. You're trying to improve your Bitcoin position by 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 trading altcoins. And right now, it's kind of a game until things start really getting ramped up and all these silent projects start coming out with all their latest developments and news. Uh, I will say that there is a um, there's another project that I'm working something out with right now. And I, I met the lead developer uh, in Vegas at... Um, Super cool guy. And then I talked to the other developers. This is for like for, you know, potential business interests about, I don't know, it's probably been six or seven months ago. And we didn't end up doing what we were talking about doing, but um, it was a really, it's a really cool project. They've got super easy to set up master nodes and they've got some huge news coming out. And uh, he went ahead and told me what it was. I'm pretty sure he's going to come on my channel and announce it on my channel first. This isn't GoChain that I'm talking about. I will say that it starts with a D, but that's all I'm going to say. Um, and um, so I'm going to have him come on and we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff. And, and we're going to show people some cool things. And we worked out a deal where he's basically going to hook me up with a master node. And then I'm going to basically show people like how to set them up. Uh, I'm going to show people all kinds of stuff. And I think when people, when we start talking about the latest news of this project that nobody knows about yet, apparently, um, I think it's going to really drive up interest and I think it could be a lot of fun. So we'll, we'll see how it turns out. But ultimately, you know, even in, even like driving around, I do a lot of my like deep thinking when I'm driving and, uh, or if I'm in the, the bath, the bathtub, <laughs> um, and, uh, I'm not even going to tell people if you're close if you're close or far away um it, it won't be long it'll probably be i think next week i think we're gonna we're gonna do this and i'll probably do a primer about the project like monday or tuesday um are you still mining crow absolutely i'm still mining i'm still mining aeon i haven't turned that off or changed it i mean it is what it is speculative mining is speculative mining i could Switch it and try to mine, you know, a bunch of other things. But I'm just going to stick to my guns. I think Aeon's going to do all right at some point in the future. Um, but um, and 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 if for whatever reason it doesn't, uh, then it is what it is. <laughs> I'll have a, I'll I'll have mined up. Uh, shit, I don't even remember when I built this rig, but um, I mean it's been going ever since I built the rig, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. So. Um, but anyway, the one thing that I'm thinking about, like you got these Bitcoin maximalists, like everything's a shit coin, you know, nothing's worth anything, everything's going to zero. I think we all know this isn't going to happen. Like this is just not how things work in crypto. Uh, the altcoin market ultimately fuels uh, Bitcoin beyond its previous all-time high. Like I, I, I believe that. And, and it's, you know, it's these it's the, the the volatility in cryptocurrency as a whole and people consistently trading their altcoin positions whether it's speculation or not that is going to drive both markets at one point which is a big part of the reason why you know so many altcoin projects are ultimately attached to bitcoin's price when bitcoin goes up altcoins go up and you know so forth and so on during that particular phase in the market um, obviously, that's not the case right now, but I do see that turning around. Some people are, I, I've seen terms thrown around recently called about uh, altcoin exodus and all this other stuff. Look, Ethereum was like 80, 80 bucks, like, uh, not even a year ago. So, you know, people talking all this nonsense, uh, I just don't see it happening. But anyway, the question is, what is ultimately going to be what drives up altcoin value like what is going so 
right now everything's based on speculation. That's just kind of the nature of the crypto market right now. Um, Bitcoin, Bit, Bitcoins, Bitcoin is a store of value. Okay, and and you can you can transmit you know a lot of monetary value from point A to point B very quickly and very inexpensively right now anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's cool. Ugh. But ultimately, that's really about its only use case. That and the fact that it's, you know, time tested and proven, so forth and so on. So people trust it as a store of value, even against its sheer volatility. Now you talk about the altcoin projects. You talk about all these brilliant ideas, all of these really cool concepts for the, for the different ways altcoins ultimately can be utilized in the market. Whether they're transforming economies in third world countries or, um, you know, they're implementing a, a new science or artificial intelligence or, or whatever the case may be. But ultimately, the true use case for cryptocurrencies overall, I don't see we're going to see strong mass adoption until cryptocurrencies are much easier to utilize. It's got to be easier. It's got to be easier to use all these different coins and projects and you know, the different wallets and the, you know, you, you have these wallet addresses of all these long random key key numbers and phrase, all this crap, right? A lot of people generally don't want to have to deal with that, okay? And so, you know, it's almost like the internet. Now, internet's pretty much just connected. But back in the day, if you had a 300 baud modem, it was, it was, it was a little more daunting. What's up? Welcome, new subscriber. Um, it was a little more daunting. Like, if you remember what it was like, some of you guys probably have no idea what the hell I'm even talking about when you're talking about a 300 baud modem. But basically, you're, you're connecting your phone line into it because most people didn't have splitters. And so, you know, you're, you're disconnecting your phone, you're plugging it into your modem. Like, I used to war dial, like, in my neighborhood when I was, like, 12. <laughs> like... And war dialing is like you're basically running your modem and you're calling up all these different numbers to try and find another modem to try and get access to. It was so funny. Uh, but anyway, you know, and, and then you're sitting there waiting. Like, it sounds like a bunch of dirty static and it's a ding, ding. And it was just ridiculous. That's kind of where I feel like cryptocurrency usability is right now. It's functional. It works, but it's not that pretty yet. And so, and I started thinking, what is going to drive people to start really taking advantage of a lot of these different blockchain technologies out there prior to it becoming truly easy to use? Yeah, dial up. Uh, it's People are going to be willing to utilize cryptocurrencies to get more cryptocurrency. I mean, let's face it, that's what's going to be a driving force. I, and I'm kind of coming around to this, and it's not anything that any, I haven't seen anybody even talk about this, but realistically, you know, at one point I made comments about how, like, when Cardano, you know, when, when it, it launches Shelly and all the proof of stake and the smart contracts and all that, how I didn't want to see a whole bunch of crappy car, casinos on them. I kind of feel a little differently, because to be quite frank with you, if some cool ones launch, I'll probably start playing them and I'll probably start talking about them if they're good and they're proven fair and legit. Um, because realistically, I don't have any desire to utilize any of my Cardano for anything either. But if, if something launches on the blockchain that allows me to roll some dice or play some bets or something like that, I might experiment a little bit and see what I can come up with. And so, you know, that being said, you know, it's like I like betting on fights. If, if somebody comes up with some sort of legit sports book on the Cardano blockchain, I'll do it. I'll bet on MMA fights. Honestly, that probably pulled me back into the sport quite a bit because I think it's more exciting. Um, hell, I remember the first time I ever bet on any sporting event was Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson. I either won 50 bucks or I didn't lose anything because I had two bets going at the same time. And... Um, you know, and, and so that being said, I really do believe that gambling sites, as long as they're legitimate gambling sites, I hate to say it, but I think they can help the space. I, some of you guys might come back and be like, oh, Crow, what are you, what are you saying? What are you talking about? But I'm going to start looking into them because I, 
and not because I plan to like, I'm not, I'm not going to be, I would never risk a lot on any of these sites. Like, you know, I, I might throw a hundred Cardano at a future Cardano casino or something and see, and have a little fun or, or what, or whatever. It just all depends on the structure and things. But anyway, before I get into the strategy, I'm going to talk about these guys a little bit. Um, this is a website called BetMatch. Um, that's the the thing here. I'll go to the main homepage. It's it's betmatch.io, and I I only actually um agreed to to talk about these guys. They they did pay me 0.1 Bitcoin to talk about them a little bit. Um, but they do MMA betting, <laughs> and so I'm like, I might try that. I haven't tried it. I haven't set up account an account. I don't know how legit they are. I haven't vetted them. I haven't, like, I just haven't. And I feel like there are a lot of different services out there. But they do, um, they do seem to have a lot of tech and a lot of stuff going on. Um, and, and it looks like everything basically runs off of the uh, Ethereum blockchain, which is fine. Um, I would prefer Cardano, but obviously they can't do that yet. Um, I would, I mean, if you're into this sort of stuff already, I would suggest maybe checking them out. If you use them, give me some feedback. Let me know. Um, because I kind of, as a blockchain, I don't know. Like, I used to watch a lot of videos from Trevon James, and Trevon James loves all this stuff. You know, like, he's always gambling and doing all kinds of stuff on Tron. And I'm like, you know what? To each their own. If you're into it and it's fun... You know, what What happens if you lose a, a 100 Tron or a 500 Tron because you're playing some silly game? Um, you know, not much. You didn't lose very much. But if it, I don't know. I just think it could be kind of fun. I don't think it's as harmful um, as, as I originally thought it could be. Um, I mean, I guess it could be. Just don't be stupid about it. Like, I look at all this stuff as a game. Anytime I've ever gone to a casino, I am definitely one of those guys where I'm like, look, I'll lose 100 bucks, and that's it. And and it's like, I don't, I never go to casinos because I'm not lucky. I'm just not a lucky person. So I, if, if it involves luck at all, even my War Machine game, it's so funny. Like, I just played War Machine um, Monday night against a guy, and I shit you not. If every time I started an attack run, I didn't roll double ones or a one and a two, and I'm not kidding. And and even he was like, dude, you're like, your dice are cold tonight. I'm like, oh, I know. And then like, he's rolling fives and sixes all night. And I was so pissed. Um, I got my ass whooped that game and I was so mad. I'm like, I don't mind losing because somebody beat me strategically. I don't like losing to shitty dice rolls. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um... But, you know, check out the site if you're into this sort of stuff. It's betmatch.io. Um, I might even try my hand a little bit because I do have a little, like, um, a little Ethereum sitting off somewhere. This is their white paper. They've got a token paper and all kinds of stuff. <coughs> um, and I might try to, I might bet on a couple MMA fights. Um, you know, I don't know what I need to see what their spread is or what they're doing about the uh, upcoming Habib Khabib's fight. <laughs> Guy's twenty seven and zero. I'm sure he's a favorite, so he's probably not going to win very much. But um, just for fun, uh, I'm going to just look at this a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. Betmatch creates a blockchain solution for bookmakers that allow players to bet against each other as well as the betting service itself, which is a supplier of liquidity to the betting market within the system. Using cryptocurrency with a trustless system of client fund storage, betting calculation, and execution of payments. The house also has a second layer, which is designed to self-organize a community of people interested in sports and bets on events. Forecasters, influencers, athletes, analysts. If, that sounds pretty cool. So, and I'm not going to shill the hell out of this. Um, like I said, I don't have an account yet. I haven't set it up. They pay me 0.1 Bitcoin to talk about them. They're like, hey, you want to talk about a casino? You want to talk about some sites, uh, some gaming sites? We got one for you that you'll, that you'll like because they, they knew that I was in the MMA. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know. Check it out. And if you use it, let me know. I am kind of curious. Um, I know I have a thing. Hold on. They gave me a link. I can, I'll post it in chat here. Copy link. Um, da, 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 how to lose money faster gamble yeah i mean look 
There's a link. I think the first few people that use the link, I don't get anything, but the first few people, I think they'll triple. Uh, let me see. Uh, they have an offer of you use the link. They will double the first three deposits. So there you go. Uh, look, I will say if you, if you, when you get into stuff like this, a don't ever bet anything. You, you aren't a hundred percent okay with losing. Cause like to me, gambling is a losing proposition. If you're betting on things like sports that you really, really know, then, you know, cool. Even then you could be wrong, but if you're wrong, um, you know, it's, you, you lost because you made a bad decision. You didn't lose to some like random numbers generator game or something silly like that. Um, where, um, you know, the house can always favor themselves, which is pretty much basically every casino out there. And this isn't a casino at all. This is just basically, it's like a sports book on the blockchain. And I think it's actually kind of cool. I actually invested in an ICO of one a long time ago, like back when I first got into it. And, um, what was it called? Can you remember what it was called? Hit to something? I don't even remember. But anyway, all right. So here's the thing. For a lot of you guys that are out there, um, you know, a lot of you guys are new and, well, not a lot of you guys, because, I mean, you guys are up here joining me at 1230 at night, um, just kind of hang out and listen to me shoot the shizzle. So, um, but for newcomers that are out there, I'm going to explain something that can make things really easy. Uh, to be able to to invest in and or trade Bitcoin or really just about anything. Um, and it's very basic, but I'm going to basically explain an example of this and kind of show how I would do it if I, so let's say I had a thousand bucks and, uh, oh wow, it's 4.40 p.m. here in New Zealand, Friday afternoon. Yes, tomorrow is Friday, right? Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, it is. I can't remember if we're going out tomorrow. I know we're going out. Um, I know we're going out, I think, Saturday night. Because I think we're going out for my wife's birthday Saturday night. I got us VIP tickets to a comedy club. And then I think we're going out with a bunch of friends and stuff. She got a day gone dog. She's got it. I mean, then then we're going to have um, VIP at uh, lo the local nightclub. So it'll be a fun night. But that, that I don't think we're doing anything Friday. I don't remember. So anyway. <laughs> um I love my wife. Like my wife is seriously, I, I like, I pick on her all the time. Um, but she really is just, she's the best woman I think I've ever known. Like she's the best mom. She's the, she's just, she, I'm not even going to start talking about her. Cause I'll like, uh, <laughs> my wife's great. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I need to stay on track. It's hard to keep focused at 1230 at night because I'm tired. Um, but anyway, um, okay. So here, I'm going to show you this chart. Man, I'm like, <clears throat> where is it? Here it is. Okay. So let's say I had, um, let's say I had a thousand bucks. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Mrs. Crow. Um, she keeps you straight. I don't need her to keep me straight. <laughs> She keeps me in line. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's say you had a thousand bucks and you know, I could, so let's say on August 6th, I had a thousand bucks. I'm like, man, I want to buy some Bitcoin. I want, uh, you know, I, I could, I'm just going to go all in. Right. And it doesn't really matter if the price is going up or down. If it's going up, great. You got in low, but if the price it may go down, well, you could screw yourself, right? Because if you just throw your thousand bucks into, into, you know, Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency because of the volatility, it could swing up or down like crazy in any direction. And, you know, you might, you might suffer a bit, might make things a little more difficult. So if you basically do what, um, what's, what's called dollar cost averaging. Now, when I'm bot trading, I do this, I do it automatically. Um, and you know, for those of you that don't understand when I'm actively bot trading, you know, DCA is basically, and, and that's, it's like doubling down, doubling down, doubling down. That's what it is when you, and you can set the settings any way you want to. Typically that's what I would do. If I entered a position and it started to drop, I would double down on it. This strategy isn't doubling down per se. This is just increasing your position over time. So if I have a thousand bucks and I'm on August 6th, Bitcoin's price is $11,987, okay? So let's just say it's about 12 grand. 
I buy $100 worth of Bitcoin on that day. And then each day for the next 10 days, I'm investing $100 a day. So on the 7th, it's about $12,003. Uh, and I come down here. By the 13th, because the price is kind of falling, then it goes up, and then it falls, then it goes up, and then it falls again, and falls again, and falls, and then it goes up a little bit, right? It's that volatility. If I just threw the $1,000 in on August 6th, I would have $1,000 of Bitcoin when Bitcoin was about 12 grand, okay? And then I held that for 10 days. Well, now Bitcoin's 10,370 bucks. So in order for me to see profit, I have to basically wait until it's gone up from the $10,370 all the way back to 11,987, which is a $1,600 difference. So if I just invested that thousand bucks on the August 6th and I'm sitting here holding it because I'm like, well, I'm a hodler and I'm, I'm going long and all that. Yeah, long term, no, not a big deal. But for a lot of people, uh, for even me, if I'm going to put a thousand bucks into something, I want to make sure that I, I'm, I'm generating a strong return more quickly. I don't want to sit on it forever if I don't want to, because now this thousand dollars is locked up, basically, unless you decide you want to sell it at a loss. This thousand bucks is pretty much tied up. You put it in at six grand, it starts to fall, you know, boom. By day three, you're already down a hundred bucks, basically, right? So if I'm a DCA, if I'm if I'm dollar cost averaging in over 10 days, this is just an example. Some people do this over 30 days. You can do it over a year, right? Um, you can do every week over for 52 times. You can do every day for however long. It all depends on your budget and how much per day you're wanting to put in. But if I start on the 6th and I put $100 in every day until the 15th, my average price, my average Bitcoin price, starting here, ending here, $100 per day over 10 days, my average Bitcoin price is $11,175. So now rather than me, if I started on August 6th, I ended on August 15th, I'm now fully vested with $1,000. Now I no longer have to wait one thousand wait for a one thousand six hundred and seventeen dollar increase. I only need the price to get past eleven one seventy five to cash out at profit if I so chose. Hopefully that is pretty you know pretty clear and simple to understand. But that's basically dollar cost averaging and people people DCA in people DCA out. Now. For the very uh, risk hungry, um, oh yeah, my big noggin was in the way. Um, you know, for very risk hungry people, they'll just go in all in and all out and they're trying to swing trade and I've done it. I've done it multiple times and it's worked out really well for me. I would say 70% of the time and the times that it didn't, let's just say it ate into a lot of what I did do well. <laughs> so, you know, even I, at this point, whether it was, even if it were larger sums, I would DCA in and I'll probably someday DCA out just because it's better safe than sorry. Now, you might say, well, let's say I uh, I go into this position and over 10 days I'm, I'm, I'm invested a thousand bucks and the price just keeps falling. Well, you can continue to average down Right, so maybe you wait a couple weeks. Now the price is down to eight thousand dollars. Well, you got a thousand dollars invested. Now the price is, you know, a month later the price is down to eight grand. Well, what do you do? I would average in more. <laughs> I mean, me personally, if I believed in what you know the the the, the return on investment is potentially going to be in the future, I would continue averaging in. Most people over time who are overall bullish long term in something are going to continue averaging in over time because it's going to lower your um it's going to lower your your target. It's going to lower your target price. And so that's that's pretty much a no-brainer. I mean, it, it, that's really how a lot of, of uh, a lot of savvy people do it. Um, I've done every week for years. That's great. Been DCA in since December twenty first, twenty seventeen. Wow, that was when it was thirty one hundred. I think. No, no, twenty seventeen. Jesus, no, that was. I'm thinking uh, this past December. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I mean, that's it, you know, and then you might say, well, um, 
you know, maybe I, I, I get my average to, you know, 11,000 and then I decide I'm going to sell at 15, but then I want to do it again. But now the price, but I saw, I took that profit and it went from 15 to 17 in a day. And then I want to come back. I want to start getting back into the market. What do I do? You do the same thing. You can continue averaging in if you'd like, because there's going to be volatility. Even when the price typically is going from, you know, 15,000 to 20,000, it might hit 16.5, come back down to 15.8. And it's still going to do the zigzag on its way up. So there are going to be opportunities. If you're averaging in, you're ultimately, rather than, you know, buying in on these prices, you're smoothing out the line. And that's ultimately what you're doing. You're, you're, you're not buying in here. Well, you are buying in here and buying in here. But ultimately, you're thinning that line all the way up. So you're going to average it out and you'll be in a better position in the long run. And that's really what it means. You're averaging in, you're averaging out, and you're basically... Um, lowering your your whip your your whisk, you're lowering your whisk. Um, you know what you doing? Yeah, I mean, I I know a little bit about this stuff. Uh, yep, crow. It's been two years already since the almighty pump. Life goes fast. It sure as hell does. Um, man, time flies. Time really, really flies. And and just you know, as another note too, you know, when you, if you were to start averaging into a position and it does start to go up, let's say your average price is, let's just say it's ten thousand, just to, for the sake of it being easy. If if your average price becomes ten thousand dollars and your and the price is is it s starts to move above that point. Um, then you can set your stop loss if you want. You can set your stop loss at you know ten thousand bucks. You don't lose anything if you get stopped out. Um, but it's ultimately at the same time, it's ultimately going to depend on the volatility. That's where looking at things like trends, um, patterns, things like that come into play. Because if you get into a situation where you're like, okay, like right now, obviously this is a downward trend. You know, I, we could have bounced off of this area here. We didn't. We didn't bounce off of 9,500. We're, we're, we're going a little bit lower. I will see. I, I see that the uh, momentum is, is changing. Let me look at this weekly real quick. I want to see what the 21 is doing. Um, wow. So we haven't even wicked off of the 21 uh, weekly, which, you know, it's it's possible we could. If we were to break through this 21 weekly, we'd probably be in, in some doggy do, is my guess. Um, but we haven't yet. And we're still, you know, we could, if we could break out of this, um, if we could break, well, this would technically hold down here. So um, I'm trying to see if there's any. So we broke above the 21 weekly all the way back. <clears throat> before uh was that march yeah it's okay china and russia are about to buy it all up that could be true um that could be true i can't wait for all of the the crow miners the crow mining.com miners to go online in september it's going to be nuts. I'm going to be able to talk about it. I'll be able to share my dashboard, show people what, you know, what's happening with Crow Mining, um, daily mining yield. It's going to be pretty slick. Um, what's crazy is that once everybody, like, I think we sold close to 600 mining units. Um, just off of the, like, you guys know, I haven't done a Crow Mining video. I think I only did, like, two Crow Mining videos. I talk about it here and there. So, like, 600 miners in that time frame. And... Once everybody's miners start kicking online, man, and people are starting to buzz about how much money the people, the, we're probably going to sell another 600 of them. And I know uh, another influencer, I won't say anything yet, um, just in case he decides not to do it at the last minute for whatever reason, but there's another influencer that I think is going to start promoting crow mining as well, and he's going to start making a cut. And um, it'll be, it's good business, man. It's, it's good stuff. And then after that, you know, if it works well for him, I'll probably open it up to a whole bunch of other influencers. And if they want to make some money promoting A6 miners in the co-located facility, they'll be able to do that. I'm all about sharing the wealth. I'm not trying to be a hog. Um, so, uh, Keith, gas a load of miners. I'm not sure. Wait, Keith, gas a load of miners in the same place, Crow, but I expect you know that. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, since we can't trade on Binance in a couple weeks, what's your game plan for trading? Uh, well, for one, I, you know, there are a lot of different alternatives out there. I mean, you've got a lot of exchanges outside of just Binance. Binance isn't necessarily the end all be all. 
And I also don't necessarily think that it's going to be forever. As I understand it, Binance is looking to shut down U.S. operations for a couple months, and then they're going to be coming back. Um, and to be quite frank with you, a lot of the positions I hold, um, I'm going to be able to trade on Coinbase anyway. So I don't really care. Um, you know, if, if you've got Coinbase as a backup, you know, and, and on top of that, I'm going to be doing everything I can to have everything that I want to actively trade on my own damn exchange. So if, if it's, if, if it can pass compliance reviews with, uh, my, the, my legal staff and, you know, they have a, a, a well thought out, well articulated opinion letter on what makes them either, um, like, look, if they're a registered security, which let's face it, the majority of stuff in crypto is not, um, um, then that's good. But if they're not, if they have a strong use case for their decentralization, um, you know, if they pass the test legally to be uh, compliant utility tokens, then, you know, there's a good opportunity. Let's put it this way. If it trades on Coinbase, there's a pretty good chance I'll be trading it at some point, too. And um, and there are projects that I would be willing to trade that maybe they're not, but it doesn't mean that they aren't compliant. You know what I mean? As utility tokens and such. So, um, but that'll come in time. I'm just, I'm, you know, um, I want to get the exchange really moving forward and, and doing well. We're going to have the STO. I want to conclude that, see where we're at with everything and then put a real big plan together on, um, you know, legal and, 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 just all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's 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 going to be a phase one, two, three to ten kind of scenario. So, um, but I'm not overly concerned with Binance. Uh, it is going to affect the liquidity of a lot of, of of a lot of tokens. But I also believe that a lot of the projects that start really pushing on their development and their milestones and and their partnerships and the, and big announcements and you know establishing that use case structure that will attract new people and so forth and so on. There'll be comp competition for people um, to list a lot of these altcoins, and I don't necessarily think it's going to be a huge deal. So, um, da -da 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 uh, where you're keeping your miners in Siberia? Another tuber, Keith, has the same thing going. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about Keith. I don't know if it's if it's similar company or or what i don't know anything about him uh have you ever used the linear regression tool i have not i don't even think i've i may have seen it mentioned here or there um bitrix yeah bitrix has always been pretty cool when i was heavily into bot trading uh which i still am obviously i'm just waiting for my bot so that i can get started again someday uh hopefully sooner than later um but that's i typically would trade on bitrix so i did a lot of my bot trades so, um, all right, guys, it's about 1 a.m. in the in the morning over here. So I'm going to call it a night. And uh, look, I just thought I'd come on, share something that might be helpful to some people, um, get a promo paid plug in um, to pay for my drug habit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, Keith Waring, he's got a pretty cool indicator. I, I've been meaning to check it out, but uh, I have not really yet. So, uh, look, thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll talk to you again, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, hopefully, but it's Friday, and I'm really looking forward to doing Jack All uh, after business Friday, so tomorrow. So, until now, oh, I will tell you guys, if you haven't seen it in a while, this is no bullshit. If you have not seen this movie in a while, you've got to go watch Pursuit of Happiness. I watched that movie this afternoon while I was working, and I lost it. By the end of the movie, I was just wiping tears like a madman and i think that's probably why i got a little bit choked up tonight just talking about my wife a little because i i have been really i'm supposed to be on estrogen blockers and apparently i was supposed to have been for the past six months and i haven't <laughs> so i just did blood work and i'm waiting to get that uh prescription filled um but um my boobs are looking real nice <laughs> so uh but in all seriousness i watched that movie again just to kind of like keep it fresh in my head like where i came from and what that you know, a lot of that struggle is like in that drive. And like, if you haven't seen that movie in a while, I highly encourage you to go watch it. I even emailed him um, directly to see if there's any chance in hell of getting him on the channel to talk about him, talk about his experience and, and things like that. So, um, you know, such an amazing movie, such an amazing and inspiring story. And um, 
Oh, the, the boys. Yeah, that's great. Uh, drugs are bad. Absolutely. I don't do drugs. I was kidding. Um, I dip though, but, uh, and I have an occasional scotch, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, have a good night guys. Crew your coins. I'll see you again soon.